Okay, well, now that we've had almost a couple of weeks after the banking crisis kicked off and the Fed raised rates in the midst of it, let's take a look and see where we are right now and what we all can do, if anything, to protect ourselves. Everyone has heard about the major bank failings and the government stepping in to stop the bleeding, right? Given that the markets, including the crypto market, are influenced by global macro events, we're going to explore the chronological developments in the banking crisis and what the Fed did and how the crypto markets reacted. Believe it or not, the story seems to have started after the collapse of FTX, but as we'll see, it actually started much earlier than that. The first domino in the cascade of events was Silvergate Bank, which many crypto businesses used as their own bank. And it was revealed that it was exposed to a $1 billion loss after the FTX collapse late in 2022. And two weeks ago, it shut down under regulatory supervision. Then on March 9th, Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB, a bank whose customers were primarily tech startups, sold $21 billion in long-term underwater U.S. treasuries, resulting in a $1.8 billion loss. Now, this spooked leading venture firms, which advised their startups to withdraw their capital from SVB. And this caused a good old-fashioned bank run, which left the bank with a negative balance of $958 million and a lot of worried people. What would happen next? What would the Fed do? Would they step in and bail out depositors? Was this the first of many bank runs? Well, the next day, the FDIC did step in and they took over SVP and they guaranteed that all depositors would be made whole. And the next few days would show that Signature and First Republic banks were also taken over by the FDIC and that all the depositors, regardless of deposit size, would be made whole. While the Fed's actions did stem the flood of bank runs in the days that followed, nobody was sure what was going to happen next. And the Fed's next public meeting was set for March 22nd. Now, up until this time, most people thought that the Fed was going to continue raising rates, but at a slower pace. What would the Fed do now? And would the banking system be able to survive? Would it be rocked? Well, early last week, we also saw that Swiss bank, a Swiss bank called Credit Suisse was also rendered insolvent and another Swiss bank, UBS, took them over. So as the world watched the Fed on March 22nd, they did raise rates again by 25 basis points and we all held our breath wondering if that would cause more bank failures or not. The crypto markets initially liked the news of, of this and Bitcoin took off, almost hitting 29,000 before settling back down at 27K and closing yesterday around 28K. Now, obviously the stock markets, they didn't like this rate hike news and they didn't like the fact that it was on the back end of this banking crisis and stocks fell substantially on Thursday. But again, they rallied back hard on Friday. So what does all this mean? And well, how did we get here? Okay, so the TLDR is that after the Fed kept interest rates so low after 2009 and so much money printing during COVID, we saw a record inflation of 9% last year. And so the Fed began an aggressive rate hike and they basically broke the banking system. So why'd they do that? Well, when interest rates were very low, banks bought a boatload of long-term mortgage-backed securities and bonds to get as high a yield as they could. Now remember that short-term bonds were paying only about one to 2%. So to get higher rates, they needed to move the duration risk out to get better rates. Well, then when the Fed abruptly raised all those long-term, or when they raised rates, all those long-term bonds were underwater. As short-term bonds and CDs were paying four or 5%, and their long-term bond rates were much less than that. But it gets worse. When depositors found out that they could get better rates in CDs and money markets and other savings vehicles, well, they fled the banks. And that, topped off with the bank's underwater long-term bonds, made them insolvent. But nobody knew. Nobody knew this because the banks were able to use a nifty little accounting trick, which allowed them to mark these bonds as held to maturity instead of marking them to market, which have, would have showed these massive losses. Essentially, they were just holding those underwater bonds on their books until they matured so they wouldn't have to take the losses. 
Now, although this is legal, it's kind of shady, but it seems like this is how business is done. Well, things might have been fine until depositors started leaving and the banks needed to sell those bonds to cover up or cover those deposits. Uh-oh, as the word got out, that's when shit hit the fan. And for SB, SVP, Signature, and others, had the Fed not jumped in and guaranteed that all those deposits, the banking system would have completely crashed. Now, one of the big problems here is that it's pretty likely that the Fed knew of this impending crisis at least a year ago. I mean, how could they not know? I mean, these people have degrees and they deal in finance all day long. How could they not conceive of this situation happening? Unless, unless there was a coordinated plan to take down some of these tech forward banks so they could take us back a notch and feel like they were more in control again. Why did they pick Silvergate, SVP, and Signature Banks? Now, I don't have a crystal ball or specific hard evidence, but there's a lot of talk out there. Uh, and as a crypto enthusiast, I believe that this is the scenario that happened. After the FTX collapse, federal regulators had to egg on their face for not catching all that fraud perpetuated by Sam Bankman Freed and his gang. And as the crypto mini rally started in 2023, the US government and regulators turned up the pressure on crypto, going after crypto staking and the Kraken lawsuit. And there were subsequent statements that all crypto assets and were securities except for Bitcoin. Now, I think the US government is afraid of the changing financial world, a world where tech puts us in control of our own money in our own hands and less in the government's hands. And they don't like this. So whether this was a coordinated attack on those tech and crypto family banks or not, they have a huge problem on their hands. How do they keep inflation in check without crashing the banking system? Okay, so where do we go from here? These are interesting times for investors, for sure. And it's crucial to get a plan together accordingly. While I'm not a financial advisor and I cannot provide any financial advice, here's what I believe might happen and my tentative plan. Although the Fed will continue to raise rates in the face of banking crisis by opening up the money coffers to the banks and depositors, they have essentially pivoted and we've gone back to quantitative easing again. Now with interest rates still high, a recession seems likely. It's likely that this banking issue will spark a political debate as some regional banks will want the same treatment as SVP and Signature, and they want all of their deposits fully backed by the government. And this money will flow in and boost the economy again, and I think the markets will rise, including Bitcoin and crypto. Now, we're also gonna have to get used to living in a four or 5% rate of inflation, which will just make people not wanna park their money in banks when they can get four or 5% in US treasuries, money market accounts, and CDs and of course, crypto. I think this crisis has given many people who are on the fence about crypto a reason to give it a shot. I mean, why not put a few percent of your savings in an asset that a bank or a government can't touch? They can't shut it down. Now, I think this boom and bust cycle in the financial system, it can't go on forever. And eventually it's going to come crashing down. And if you don't have at least some of your assets outside of the system, well, you're gonna be in big trouble. Now, I've got a lot more information about the possibility of a regulator and government cover-up as they really should have seen this coming and prevented it, but they didn't. And possibly it was done on purpose, like I mentioned before, to take these tech and crypto forward banks down, take them out because they want to pave the way for their own government-controlled central bank digital currency or CBDC, where they will have the advantage of the digital dollar but they'll have even more control over all of our money. So stay tuned for more videos like this and uh, other crypto issues that we'll talk about. And remember, if you wanna put some of your savings or assets into a non-bank and non-government controlled financial system, then send me a message, DM me, and let's talk about how I can help you learn more about crypto and coach you on how to buy and store your first crypto. So again, if you like this video, please uh, hit the like button and uh, subscribe so you can get more videos about this banking crisis and how it affects crypto and all the other crypto news. So this is J. Scott McMillan for Crypto for the Rest of Us. We'll see you next time.